Hello, my name is Lance Williams. Welcome to another session of Healing Journeys today. I've last time I talked to you about attitude and having a proper attitude in the Lord and how attitude is so important. And I want to continue talking about to, that today and really want to hone in on having a a joyful attitude and having your joy in the Lord. Joy is such a powerful thing. And the opposite to that, anxiety and oppression, is, is a terrible thing. And it's a thing that the enemy uses. And so I want to talk to you about joy and having a joyful attitude. I'm going to start in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. I'll give you a minute to get there. But since I've, since I've come to know the Lord, I have been much more joyful than I ever have in my life. And I can have joy even in the face of bad circumstances. Because see, a happiness comes and goes, but a joy can remain. And that's what God desires for you and I to have, is to have a joy that is constant in Him. So Proverbs 17.22 says, A joyful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. You ever been around somebody that's just negative all the time? And it's just hard to be around that person or maybe that person is you maybe people have had a hard time being around you because you're negative all the time it's it's it attracts demonic forces when we're always complaining and grumbling and being negative and focusing on what's going wrong that can attract demonic forces kind of like you if you've ever seen cow poop and there's flies all over it well that's what complaining and having a negative attitude does it attracts more negative things it attracts negative energy but it says here a joyful heart is like a good medicine being joyful is like a medicine to your own soul and not only to yours but to others as well so being joyful is so powerful. Again, it says here, it's like a medicine. A joyful heart does good for you. And the beautiful thing about that is that we get to choose. We get to choose whether we're joyful or not. At one time in my life, because of all the hardship that was going on around me, I used to I used to just focus on that, and I, I was a lot more negative person than I am now. And now that I've shifted my focus, I've, I've made the choice to shift my focus. Now I, have, I choose to look at what's going right. Now I don't walk in this perfectly, no one does, but I've shifted my focus. I choose to focus on what's going right more so than what's going wrong. And it has changed my attitude. Even in the midst of negative circumstances, I can still be joyful and I can still be smiling and have a joy that maybe others around don't because I'm focusing on something else in that moment. I'm focusing on what's right, what's good. And you can do the same. This goes all the way back to the Garden, the Garden of Eden. God gave Adam and Eve all this, all these trees and all this fruit. Everything that they needed, everything that they wanted. He said just, essentially he said just don't eat from this one tree. You can have all this, just don't eat from this one. And then many of you know the story. The serpent came in and deceived Eve into eating and partaking of that one tree that God said not to. And then Adam ended up joining in with her in eating 
of that of that tree and then it allowed sin and sickness and all kinds of uh, just terrible things to come into this world. That's why now we live in a fallen world because of that choice back then. But the thing is, is the enemy came in and he got Adam and Eve to focus on the one thing they couldn't have instead of everything that they could have. I believe if Adam would just kind of, if Adam and Eve both would have just kind of taken a step back and said, wait, God has given us all this. I don't need that anyway. But yet, they got their focus, the enemy got their focus on the one thing that God said, don't have. And it's the same today. We have the choice to choose to look at what all God has done, what all he has given us, or to choose to look at and, and magnify the negative. And folks, just this simple principle will, it'll transform your life. It all comes down to focus. Again, if Adam and Eve would have just took a step back and just thought about everything that God had given them, they may not have made that decision that they did. I'm not blaming them. I probably would have done the same thing. But folks, it comes down to what are we focused on? That's going to affect our attitude. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. Let me find it here. Matthew 6. Apologize, I'm looking for it here. Okay, I'm going to start in verse 19. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Verse 22, The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So you can't serve two masters. Now what this passage is talking about, it really comes down to focus. What we just read, it's not saying that money's evil, but you can't be a servant of money and be a servant of God. Jesus tells us in this same chapter to not be anxious about anything, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So make that your main focus, and then all these other things will be added unto you. But the, what I want to point out is the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light. But if you look up that word, healthy, other translations say good if your eye is good. But if you actually look up that word, it means to be single. So you could read it like this. If your eye is singly focused, your whole body will be full of light. Look it up. If you have a single focus on the correct thing, on Jesus, then your whole body will be full of light. But it's when we start getting distracted and getting our focus off of God and His Word, getting our, our focus off of the correct things, then that's when we allow darkness to creep in. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, 
It says, A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart the spirit is crushed. You know, many people, I've experienced this and I've seen other people experience this where they are a joyful, happy person. And then they get into a relationship that is not of God. And through that relationship, the enemy starts tormenting. And I've seen people go from joy to sorrow really quick through negative relationships. And I've experienced that myself. Joyful going in, and then just so hurt and so oppressed during that just lost all joy. And when we see many people think that they can go out and live in sin and it's okay and it's fun. And yeah, it may be fun for a season. But the Bible says it doesn't last. You know, at first, when I first got into drugs, it was, it was a blast at first. It was a lot of fun. But it got to a place where it wasn't fun anymore. And I had been robbed of my joy. I had been robbed of my health. I had been robbed of my finances. I had been robbed of so many things. And I didn't have the joy like I once had. Until I came back to Jesus. And I regained that joy. And that joy, as we've already read, was like a, it was like a medicine to my soul and to my body. And since I've come back to him and chose to be joyful in the Lord at all times, it has truly been a medicine to my entire being. I've, I've been healed of sicknesses. I've been set free from addiction. My emotional life is so much more fruitful because I chose to be joyful. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But what I want to point out here is joy. A fruit of the Spirit is joy. If you've received Christ, if you've been born again, then joy is already on the inside of you. You have it. Now all you got to do is start focusing on that joy in you and start living that out. And that's the beautiful part about what God has done for us. That everything that we need right now, it's already on the inside of us. We have access to everything we need through the Spirit of Christ in us. And the Spirit of Christ is true joy. So instead of focusing on these things going wrong, we can focus on what God's done for us and we can focus on other things that he's done for us in the physical, in the natural. We can shift our focus and it will shift our attitude and it will eventually shift the course of our life. It is powerful, but I just wanted to show you here that this is a fruit of the Spirit. This is a fruit from the one who's dwelling in you. So there's no excuse for you to not walk in joy. You can walk in joy if you choose to. In Proverbs 12, 25, it talks about something that can rob you of joy. It says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, robs him of the joy. But again, we get to choose. You know, we can choose whether we're anxious or not. We can choose whether we hold on to offense or not. 
whether we be offended or not. We get to choose. And it all comes down to focus. Proverbs 18, 14 says, A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? Who can bear a crushed spirit? But there's people who have a crushed spirit who... There's, there's people who have a crushed spirit when they've just been through a, a little bit of stuff. And there's people who don't have a crushed spirit who's been through a lot more severe things. And folks, I'm telling you, it's not so much what happens to you as much as it is of how you respond. It's no, not so much of the, the circumstances happening to you, but how you respond to those circumstances. Second Corinthians seven ten says, "For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death." Again, a godly grief produces repentance, but a worldly grief produces death. When we grieve the world's way, it will rob us of our joy. It will hinder our attitude. There's so many people out there that, yes, tragedy happens, but because they stayed focused on it, they keep their mind on those things, then it's totally got them beat down. And God wants to deliver you from that. Let's go over to Philippians chapter 4. Paul wrote this book while he was in prison. It says, uh, Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Now this is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul. He's telling us to rejoice always, and he's not only just telling us to rejoice always, he's telling us that twice. Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. And Paul's writing this from the midst of a prison cell, and a prison cell that's much worse than the prisons today. Telling us to rejoice always. It wouldn't be right for him to tell us that if we couldn't do it. Paul chose to rejoice always. We can choose to rejoice always, no matter the circumstance. It says, let your reasonableness be uh, be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a great way to walk in joy. Because when we're choosing to be thankful, we're focused on the correct things. The opposite of that is complaining. When we're complaining... We're focused on the negative things. We can choose. Are we going to choose complaining or are we going to choose thanksgiving? And the Holy Spirit tells us here, But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving is a powerful, powerful way to walk in joy and to not walk in negativity. Then he goes on to say, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So all those things I just mentioned, he said, focus on these things. I want to read this in the New Living Translation. I just read it in the English Standard Version. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. 
Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. So fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on what's honorable. Fix your thoughts on what is right. Fix your thoughts on what is pure. Fix your thoughts on what is lovely. Fix your thoughts on what is admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So he's telling us, fix your mind on these things. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Folks, he's telling us right here, choose to do this, what I just talked about. Choose this. You can choose. Every day we have a choice. We can choose life or death. We can choose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. Complaining and grumbling and focusing on the negative is choosing death, but being thankful, choosing to have a joyful attitude, that is choosing life. And other people will start to enjoy being around you even more, the more joyful and the more thankful that you are. It's a powerful, powerful weapon. If we, if something is causing us to lose joy, you need to pay attention. Because the Bible tells us, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Talking about He'll put His desires in you and fulfill those desires if you're delighting yourself in Him. But if you're doing something and you don't have a joy doing it, then you need to just take a step back and ask God if you really need to be doing that thing. So many people think if, I've heard this all the time, that people think if they, you know, if they're going to walk with God, God may send them to do something they don't want to do. And they always say, you know, send them to a hut down in Africa. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. But that's not my experience with God. God, when he's calling me to do something, he puts a joy and a desire there that I actually want to do what he wants me to do. And when I start losing a, a joy in a certain direction, then I pay attention to that. And I start seeking God. God, am I supposed to do this? Because I don't have a joy there anymore. And the, um, I wonder if I could find this real quick, but... Let me try to find this scripture. It just came to me. Romans 14. Go there real quick. Romans 14. Verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of God, folks. Joy, goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's part of the kingdom. And that's not the kingdom just to come. That's the kingdom right now, the kingdom within you. Goodness, joy, and peace. Folks, we need, to, we need to learn when we're following God, God's going to lead you. Most of the time, it'll be inwardly. We need to pay attention. What do we have peace with and what do we have a joy doing? And a lot of times, I use those to really sense, God, what are you telling me to do? Because most of the time, there's going to be a joy and a peace and a desire there of what he's calling you to do. So I just encourage you, shift your focus. Choose to have a joyful attitude. And when being led of the Lord, pay attention. What do you have joy doing? What brings you joy? 
Now, I'm not talking about a, an ungodly thing that brings you a false sense of happiness. I'm talking about a true inward joy. And again, if something is not bringing you joy, then step back and ask the Lord if you're supposed to be doing it. And if it brings you joy and it's a godly thing, then I encourage you to press into that. Well, that's all I have for you today. 